Hello, everybody. What's up, man? So, the 550. I just got a brand new string change. Ernie Ball Super Slinkies. It's tuned to standard tuning. Got the bar on it. Now, I was going to go over some things here for beginners. This video is going to be directed at beginners. Or people that may be afraid to try and do their own setups. Now, these kind of guitars with the original Edge and all that happy stuff. You take these to a tech, they could charge you quite a pretty penny to work on it for you just because of this contraption here. Now, I've had people ask me in the past, why not just spend the money to uh, take it to a luthier, you know? Why not, you know... Why would I ever want to learn to do this myself? Okay, so. What entails in your setup? You know, string height. Intonation. You know, neck relief. Tremolo angle. Stuff like this. You'd want to learn to do all of this yourself to save yourself some money and also to get educated on things because you know one day there might not be any luthiers to take it to or you might get so many that have the floating trim on them that you can't afford to take all of them to a tech everything that you do to this setup intonation string height neck relief you know all that stuff, if you screw it up, it can be fixed. And any changes you make here, anywhere on the guitar, can be undone. So, if you get your, uh, if you go online or get in your manual for your guitar, you will find the exact specifications that Ibanez or whatever company you have recommends that your string height be. What they recommend for your neck relief. You know? One thing that's never discussed much is the pickup height. This really does matter for output. Now this one is very close to my string here. I cannot put my finger up under it. It's almost touching the pole. You want it to be one eighth of an inch. Usually for both sides. The single coil I usually dump into the cavity here or into the pig guard because you hear a click when you're playing. This one also one eighth of an inch. Action height is all personal preference. It's what you like. Neck relief sometimes is personal preference, you know? Now, some people that shred, that play these guitars, they want their neck to be super straight. Mine, not super straight. I just lowered the action on this guitar a little bit. And look at that. Look at how close that is on both sides. I mean, she is down there, boy. And there is no defretness. None of that. But see, I was taught about how to do these. How to do these guitars. When you change your strings, as I've said before, do it one string at a time. Don't yank them all off. You can't do that because usually, you know, these are on springs. This bridge is on springs. It's, new, it's usually going to go back to the same spot where it is when you tune it, you know. But you may have to make some adjustments here in the back. And this is what you would use for your string height. Or not string height. Bridge angle. Sorry. The string claw. And as long as you keep your guitar properly maintained, it will last you forever. And that's the reason that you want to learn to do this yourself. The only way that you're going to learn if you might be afraid of it. Is to get on this thing, dude. Start restringing it. You know. And I took one one time. Purposely messed all of this up. Intonation. String height. All out of whack. Neck relief. I never touched because I'm afraid. Most times. But all of this, dude. Like. I had it playing so bad. That you could not. You could not play anything on it comfortably. And this was on a... Uh, 
one of the Ibanez RGs I had from Indonesia. And I let it sit in the case for months, dude. I didn't do anything to the guitar, and everything went haywire with temperature change throughout the seasons. <laughs> and it got so jacked up that I couldn't do anything. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to get a pack of strings. I'm going to go to town on it, see if I can get it working. And I just started adjusting these bridge posts, you know. Got the intonation, looked it up on YouTube and all kinds of different places. Not YouTube. I looked it up, like, uh, on my phone at the time that had a measly internet. Trying to find specifications for them, and everything said personal preference. <laughs> intonation, not so much. This, for me, when I first did it, was a lot of guesswork, man. Put one saddle, you know, where I think it might need to be, and then, and then tune it up, check it again. Go back and forth till I got it half-ass in, in decent sounding condition. And then usually it would just take one small little movement more. And they go right back. See this stair step they have going on here? See how this one's just a little further back than that one? And as it gets on down, this one's a little bit more forward than this one? That is what you want it to look like. When I first started playing the guitar, I did not know about this. And I took, me and my dad, took our strats. Our saddles were completely straight to each other. <laughs> I played with bad intonation for years. Years and years and years until I was told by a friend, Hey man, it's not supposed to be that way. Let's get this bar out of here. Now adjusting your neck relief, small movements, small adjustments. Check it again. Your bridge angle. You'll want it to be about like that, you know. Mine's a little bit raised up because I don't mind it. I like to get a little more of a pull up on my bar. So I don't, I don't mind it being a little bit visible right here, right up under there. That's okay for me. But in order to do that, you will need to usually remove the back plate. But here, Ibanez does not require that you do that. They have slots in the back of their trim cavity covers, which is great. Those two screws right there. If your bridge is pulled way up and your bar's too close, you should tighten your springs in and then tune the guitar. and It'll pull it down, and that's how you learn. You go back and forth with tightening and loosening. You probably wreck a few of them to where it pulls the springs out of the body, <laughs> but eventually you're going you're gonna to learn how you need... To do it. To get it right. That's the way I learned. And man what a lifesaver. Because now I don't have to pay 80 to 100 bucks. Just to get my guitar worked on man. And if you can look right here. You can see. Sorry about the squeaks of the bed. Right here. See that little rectangle. That's how you know. That's your guide. To let you know where this thing needs to sit. And as I see it right here, I think it looks great. To me, that's perfect. Awesome playability. No defretness, just a little. But that's okay. I do not mind. And fret buzz. Every guitar is innate to fret buzz. You're going to have a little bit. It's just the nature of the instrument. If you can't hear it through the amp, then it's not you know, anything to worry about. Now, if it is coming through the amp really bad and you're not getting notes on level frets is usually your, your culprit there. If you're getting fret buzz up here, like fret 1 to about fret 5 or so, your neck is bowing this way, like towards you. And if you're getting D fretness in the middle of the neck on down, the neck is too far back. You got a back bow in it. That truss rod up here in this cover, you adjust it, it will alleviate that. Now, do it in small adjustments. Everything on this guitar or any floating trim, you will want to do in small increments. Don't take your back plate off, get you, you know, a drill and screw in the screws, screw out the screws. Don't crank it with a screwdriver. Barely turn those things on each side. 
And you'll be surprised how much of a difference it actually makes when you barely move something on one of these. So, that's kind of what I wanted to go over. Get the 550 out here after I put brand new strings on her. Perfect 10. This guitar has become my baby. I love this instrument. She's just one of the best guitars I've ever owned. My other one being my Prestige Under the Bed. The JS series I have is nice. It is, but not as nice as this. And then this was, that JS was double the money of this. 1800 for the JS? 999 right here. And it's the best quality instrument that I've ever had. This is better than a Gibson. This is better than the USA Strat that I've played. I love it more than ESP. Not to hate on these companies, and you know, these companies have been in business for a long, long time. They make great instruments. But for me, as a player, this is what I like. The feel of these things is amazing. That action, getting it that low, you can't almost, you almost can't do that on another guitar without defretness. Ibanez, you're able to get these things low, man. Super low. And you'll hardly ever experience fretbooks. And this radius, 16.9 inches. Perfect, man. Love it to death. I am considering one day swapping out these pickups here for some DiMarchios. Just don't know what combo yet. But don't be afraid of it, man. Don't be afraid to try and start doing your own setups. When you start to restring these things, don't be afraid of it. Like I said, there's nothing that you can do to this guitar that can, or to one of these bridges that cannot be undone. Unless, of course, you don't unlock these locks in your posts and you rip these out of the body. That kind of sucks. That would require some, some luthier work. And there are other things that will uh, require some luthier work, like... Cranking too much on your truss rod, that that could require a luthier to, to repair for you. Now, one other thing I want to mention here. If you ever do experience the trim cloth screws pulling themselves out of it, out of the body up there, all you need to do is go to like a hardware store or a craft shop and get you some wooden dowels. Very thin wooden dowels. Stick them in the holes with some Elmer school glue. Stick them in there. Cut it off as close as you possibly can. And then let it sit overnight. Let the glue dry up. And then thread your screws back in. And it will, it will create new threads. And it will be as good as it was from the factory. So that's kind of what I wanted to go over. Bring out the RG550 as an example. Now, if you were if you don't own one of these guitars that have a floating trim on them, your setup's going to be much, much, much more simple. <laughs> Intonation's a lot easier to work with because on these, any adjustment you make here or there changes all of this. Any adjustments you make with the claw in the back can with the angle here can change all of this. You know, it's just a whole it's just a go back and forth until you get it right. But if it's a fixed bridge guitar or a tunematic bridge, everything about it is much easier to do. So don't be afraid of it. Just grab your favorite guitar. If it starts to feel weird to you and you think it's not playing as good as it used to, you know, do you do an action adjustment? And the key, the rule of thumb for me for action adjustment is I lower it down until I get fret buzz, like bad fret buzz. And then I'll take and I'll raise it back up until I don't hear the fret buzz coming through the amp. That's my rule of thumb on it. Intonation, you got to be a little more precise. But there is no such thing as perfect intonation. It's going to be slightly out on some of these frets. It's just the nature of the instrument. Neck relief, just take your time with it, man. Don't do any major crazy adjustments. Just a little bit, a little bit. Small increments 
on all of this stuff makes such a big difference. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, if you got any questions about anything, hit me up in the comments. I'll try to get to you and respond. Thanks for watching. And please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the video.